Hello and welcome back to Drive on the Wild Side, where today I'm going to be putting forward my view on a debate that's been going on since the 90s. What Japanese manufacturer made the best sports car? Today I've lined up five sports cars. One from Honda, one from Nissan, one from Mazda, one from Mitsubishi, and one from Toyota. So without further ado, let's introduce the competitors. This is the Mitsubishi GTO, a four-wheel drive twin-turbo Toyota Supra killer made by a company who built your local farmer's pickup truck. This is one of the cheapest cars on the list today, with examples starting for less than 10k in the UK. This is also the only car on the list that is all-wheel drive, and, well, it should be able to complete very comfortably with all the other cars on this list. Now this is the unfair entry, one, and one of my favourites as well, the Honda NSX, mid-engine supercar from Honda, which competes very well with these cars considering all of them have the same power due to laws in Japan. The RX-7 is also on this list, boasting beautiful lines and a twin-turbo rotary power plant. Now, obviously, this produces 320 horsepower, so the same as all the other cars on this list. And, well, it should be certainly a good match for the test I am planning today. Now, the Nissan Skylab was never really meant to compete with any of the cars on this list. In fact, it was just really an exercise for the engineers over at Nissan. So instead, I went with the 300ZX, the first proper redesign of the Z car since the original back in the 60s, or was it 70s? You can tell me in the comments. Now, here it is, the entry from Toyota, the overrated, sorry, and it is overrated, legend, the Toyota Supra. Very cool car though, and well, let's see what it can do in the race today. The, the race today is just a simple sprint up the mountain. Now, to decide which car is best, I am going to get a time to see how fast these cars went up the hill. So, the problem with the Supra is it's got lots of power. It's got 320 horsepower, but it's just a bit too much for this car. I mean, you can just see it drifting around. I'm, you know, I'm not doing that deliberately. It's just the problem is the turbos just kick in so suddenly that the back end would just step out. And as a result of that, in real life, they're actually quite rare in the UK. Hence why they are pretty expensive. In fact, let me just pause the video one second just to show you how ridiculous prices these have got. $140,000 for one of these. I mean, sure this thing's starting fast and furious, but as good as a movie as that was, I mean, it's starred alongside a Volkswagen Jessa for crying out loud. I mean, that's, I don't think Fast and Furious is a really good enough reason for these to go up in value. Now, anyway, back to the 2K run, or hill climb, or whatever you want to call this. And across the line in 1 minute 13. Not bad, not bad. Now here comes the 300ZX, and I'd say this car's definitely the most likeable, it's got a lot of character and it's definitely got the biggest legacy because, well, it's family line stretches back a long way. And this being a full redesign, it's got some pretty big shoes to fill. And well, I think it's definitely filled those shoes. It's got a 320 horsepower twin turbo V6. It's rear wheel drive, target top, it's reassuringly retro, and headlights were actually put on the facelift of the Lamborghini Diablo. And I'm not making that up. But here's the big question can it beat the Supra? Now it has got a slight disadvantage being its weight, it is a little bit heavier than the Supra. So can it beat it? Well, let's find out. Okay, coming up to the final flags, and across the line in 1 minute 14. Okay, so this is the Mazda RX-7 Spirit R, the fastest 
ever RX7 twin turbo rotary engine. It's only a 1.3 and that means it's pretty light, but it's got a 0 6 time of 5 seconds, so it is a little bit slower, but it can get its power down pretty quickly as the engine revs super fast. And thanks to the turbochargers, it revs even faster. So let's see what this plucky little sports car can do. Super grippy around the corners. Coming up to the final straight now, and it's going to be a 1 minute 10 seconds. Okay, so here is the NSX, the supercar of the bunch, mid-engines, and very well known for its handling, so it should tackle this hill climb very well. Unfortunately, this, well, being a supercar, could really only compete with base-level sports cars like the Ferrari 348, so the problem was it couldn't really get up there with the Porsche 911s and the Ferrari F355s of the world, which is a real shame considering the work Honda put in to build this thing. Anyway, let's see what this beautiful car can do. Super smooth through these last corners and onto the final straight. Approaching the finish line where it will do a 1 minute 11. That's actually slower than the RX-7. Okay, now here is the very technologically advanced Mitsubishi GTO. This has active aero, active suspension, it's got four-wheel steering and four-wheel drive. So let's see what this technology does. Now it's actually got very similar performance stats to the Supra. So I'm expecting a time in the 1 minute 13 sort of region. Um, well, I'll be surprised if it's any faster or any slower for that matter. So let's fast forward to the end and see what it did. A little bit of understeer on the way to the final corner and now putting all the power down from that twin turbo V6 and across the line in 1 minute 13 as I predicted. So there you go, the best Japanese sports car is the RX-7. It's definitely the best looking and it turns out is the fastest if you want to race to the top of a mountain for whatever reason. To go to a ski resort perhaps. So I hope you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe for more in the future, until next time, goodbye.